Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about pumps for off-grid, pumping water in situations where you don't have grid power. So I have this beautiful pond behind me, but one of the issues with it is it's an irrigation um, runoff pond, which means when they irrigate the fields, this pond fills up, and then uh, for a couple days it just sits like this, and it's kind of stagnant. So it gets a lot of fresh water, then sits, then fresh water, then sits. Well, what I want to do is introduce a pump like this, and this is actually what I did last year. This is the pump that I used. And I'm going to go over a couple different pumps and pumping options for a situation like this where I don't have grid power. This is a 120 volt uh, AC pump, so it just plugs in to grid power. And the nice thing about this is it's designed to run continuous. So this this will run 24/7 if I wanted it to, if I could get enough power. And I just had it hooked up. I had a hose on the outside here, so I would pump out to a hose. And I would have this inlet, I had a, big, uh, a bigger hose on it with a filter on the end. Um, after um, the, se the season of using this, for something went wrong with it, it doesn't work anymore. So I got to dive in and figure it out. Th what I like about this is that it was really powerful. Um, it used quite a bit of power, but it uh, was also very, very loud. And what I didn't like is that I had to kind of prime it. I would have to get water into it first in order for it to start pumping. It wouldn't suck water up out of the pond. To initially to first start going. So um, there's a couple different options that, I'm, that I want to go over. You can have um, a DC pump or an AC pump. That one I just showed you is an AC pump. It uses 120 volts AC, which is the same kind of power you get from the power company. I have two other pumps right now I'm going to show you. And even though they're AC pumps, I can still use them off grid because I have this little um, tiny cabin right here that has solar panels on all one side of it. So I have plenty of solar and I use an inverter to change that power. We'll go take a look at it. I change that power from, uh, from the solar. I charge it up in a 48 volt battery bank and then, I, uh, and then I convert that over to 120 volts. There's the solar panels right there. So with this system, it uses a little bit more equipment, but it makes it so that I can have um, 120 volt pumps and use them without having to use a 12 volt DC pump. So I'll just plug this in right now and we'll go take a look at the pumps. So this pump we're looking at is fairly inexpensive. It's a not a submersible pump and it runs on 120 volts. This is what it looks like. What I like about this one is that it just takes a regular hose as the input and a regular hose as the output. You don't have to have any special connectors or any special types of pipes or anything. I forget the price, but I'll include it in the link of the description of this. So this says 115 volts. It says 330 gallons per hour. And it says the max head height is 39 feet. So I can't pump water any higher than 39 feet. In this case, I'm only pumping it up uh, maybe 15 feet. And then I have it inside of a little garbage can right here. So this is a metal garbage can to help fill the screen it. And then it came with this little thing too. I won't pull it out for too long, but it just has a little filter right there that kind of filters out some of the water. So this is pumping up into here. This has the pump that's spinning around and now it's pumping up and out. So it's a pretty decent pump. I mean, you have a little bit after 15 feet you get about this much pressure. Not too bad for a, for a little pump. So I've got this five gallon bucket. We're just gonna try and fill this up. And, uh, and then I'll run a timer and see how long it takes to fill this up. All right, it's just about filled to the top and we're at 147, 148, 150, one minute, 50 seconds gets it up and over the top of this five gallon bucket and again that's with about 15 maybe even yeah 15 feet of lift and about a total of maybe 20 feet away let's take a look at another pump this is a submersible pump it also runs on 110 120 volts and this one we can see here it's consumes 400 watts. So 400 watt max head height is five meters and it says 8,000 liters per hour. So this is a much larger 
much much larger pump. I also have this one in a uh, in a metal garbage can, and this one's nice. It's a little bit more expensive, and it has a float on it. So this float, when it's up floating like this, the pump will be on. And if the water level falls and the pump and this uh, float goes sideways or upside down, it shuts off the pump so it won't burn itself up. So this one's a little bit more sophisticated and a lot bigger motor and bigger pumping apparatus. Let's put it in the water and turn it on. You'll also notice I have a, a much bigger hose. I have an inch and a quarter hose hooked to this instead of just a regular garden hose. Throw that in about there. Okay, let's do the bucket test on this one. Keep in mind, this isn't as long of a hose and it's not lifting as high, so it's going to perform better. And it's also a much uh, bigger. So. Wow, I'm just counting in my head. We're like 10 seconds right now. And uh, I better hold this bucket or it's gonna fall over. <laughs> But yeah, 15, 20 seconds to fill that up. So, I mean, compared to the other ones, there's just no contest. But again, what does it say? 400 watts. This uses a lot more power. It's a much bigger motor. So again, this one is, the reason it performs better is because it's much higher. This is 400 watts and uh, it's just a, a bigger motor, uses more power. It's just a, and it's much more expensive as well. I forget the price of all these, but I'll include them in the description of the video. Um, now let's go take a look at some, some DC pumps. So I have DC pumps, and they're different than this. They don't use um, 120 volt grid power. They just hook directly to a 12 volt battery. So that can save on efficiency. If you're doing off-grid anyway, and you have just a simple solar setup charging up a battery, if, when you introduce an inverter to change it from DC to AC, you always lose some. You can lose as much as like 15, 20% of your power just gets lost in the conversion process. So if you're pumping anyway with a DC pump and you have a DC battery, it can be a good way to go if you don't need any AC power in that location. So let's go take a look at some of those pumps and see how they perform. Here's one of those DC pumps now. This is just a really cheap one, kind of an off brand, but it says 12 volts DC, uh, well, I don't know why it says AC 100 volts to be used with DC, not used with AC 100 volt. So if you hook this up to AC, it'll burn it up. But uh, you can see right here on the actual motor, has some information about it, and it just has a little outlet, like a one inch outlet hose, I think, and it just sucks in the water from here. This is a lot like that blue one we just looked at, only it's smaller and it's 12 volts instead of 120 volts. The voltage doesn't really matter. You can have a really, really powerful 12 volt or 24 volt DC pump th that matches the same thing as a 120 volt. The voltage doesn't make, a, make for a stronger pump. The size of the motor and the amount of amps or watts that it uses is what makes it really powerful. So um, we're gonna go look at one just like this, um, a little bit bigger that's already submersible. What I like about the submersible pumps is that they're quiet. So if you're doing a water feature, um, since it's under the water, that kind of mutes the sound and they're just quieter anyway. So underwater submersible are going to be better. The challenge with underwater is you have to make sure this filter doesn't get clogged up with leaves and dirt and junk, which is why I put them inside of those um, garbage cans. There are a screen around it to help keep some of that debris out. Okay, this is the DC pump setup. So I have a little so solar panel set up there, 100 watts of solar. I've got a battery, we'll go take a look at it. And I'm filling up this pond. I lined this pond and I'm gonna put some fish in here. So this is how much water comes out. Um, it's probably the lowest flow of any that we've looked at. Again, it's not because it's 12 volt inherently, it's because this is a, a very cheap pump. It's just a very, very cheap pump. It's cheaper than the other ones we looked at. But it's nice because it runs directly off of a 12 volt battery. And even if the solar was disconnected, it would still run. The battery runs the pump and the solar panel keeps the battery charged up and healthy and keeps the pump going. We can see the pump right down there. So it's just under the water there pumping. And this one's pumping up quite a ways. This has the most vertical pump and the longest distance of any that we've looked at so far. This is maybe 45 minutes ago is when I turned it on. So it's filled up this water in 45 minutes. I think it was, it's rated at 330 gallons per hour. It's 12 volts at eight amps. This little solar setup is just a little briefcase solar. It's portable, 
It has an integrated charge controller in the back, just like we looked at in the cabin. Uses the same kind of standard MC4 connectors. And then this is just, this just outputs variable voltage depending on how much sun is shining on it. Um, oh, actually the panels do. And this regulates that and converts it all into 12 volts and charges up the battery at a constant, I think 14 or so volts to keep it nice and, and float charged. I'm gonna run a test on this uh, with the submersible pump. So I've got a little stopwatch, Let me make sure I start that. So starting the stopwatch, Just about to the top of the rim there, and we're at three minutes and 45 seconds. And it's over the edge, 350. So three minutes and 50 seconds to fill this up. And again, this hose does have some a couple of holes in it, two holes in it along the way. I hope you found this video informative, and I hope it showed you some different ideas for ways that you can pump and move water in off-grid situations. You can also use I'm using solar in this case, but you could use wind to charge the batteries. You could use like geothermal or all kinds of stuff, hydropower, hydropower to pump water. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I can't speak to the longevity of these yet, so I'm going to use them over the summer and then kind of show you which ones hold up best. I, my gut feeling is the ones you pay a lot more for are going to have better like metal components inside, whereas I think some of these cheap, cheap ones from China are probably plastic components, but they're just so cheap. I figured I could buy a ton of them, you know, I could buy 15 or so of them for the same price as one big one. And then, I don't know, I'm just experimenting with it. So I'll do an updated video, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I look forward to catching you in the next video.